Welcome to Novel Tech Media. In this video, we are going to talk about freelance programming. I'm going to speak from my own experiences and experiences from people I know. And we're going to look into the, this world and see how it really looks like. We're going to speak about things, how much you can earn, uh, what are the things you need to think about, is it really worth it, how hard is it, what were the pitfalls I experienced. And one also important thing is, I'm working in the European Union, uh, which is a lot different than people working in the US or for US clients. This is also a perspective we're going to cover and I hope this is going to be interesting for a lot of people since there are really huge differences working in Europe, the US, Asia and other countries. So let's get into it. Uh, what is the difference between being a freelance programmer and employed software developer? So the first difference is you're going to have a fixed um, hours working, you're going to work eight, nine hours per day. And as a freelance programmer, you're going to maybe create fixed uh, price projects. You're going to be paid a certain amount of money to build out something. Um, that's like the standard narrative, but it isn't necessarily going to look like that. So I'm working in Europe and my entire experience comes from working um, in the European Union. And those experiences are going to be a lot different from people working in the US or Asia, for example. Um, so I think that all the videos out there are mostly from people having experiences and working for US clients, which is, from my experience and the people I know, a lot different than working in Europe, for example. So um, how is this going to look like? Um, as a freelance programmer, you're going to need to get clients. And when you get the client, you're mostly going to get a project that's going to last for around six to 12 months. Some are like three months, but I didn't uh, see very often projects that are less than three months. So um, it's actually going to look a lot like working for an employee, besides having the difference that um, you're going to have to pay your own health insurance, you're going to have to pay your taxes, you're going probably need to have an accountant, uh, pay some other types of insurances and this type of stuff. So that's going to be the uh, biggest difference actually. In Europe, it works mostly that um, you work either for startups or larger corporations like the banking sector, insurance companies and some automotive companies and generally larger corporations. And they, for example, have a new project, they want to update something, digitalize something, build out a new feature. And it's going to look like um, the following. They're going to um, put out the project out there, put out a tender, and people are going to apply for that, mostly through an intermediate. And that intermediate is going to be a staffing company. So it depends, of course, how big you are. If you have your own consulting company, then you're probably going to have a direct conversation with those um, corporations. But if you are a smaller freelancer and you all work only for yourself, then you're most probably going to go through those staffing companies. So um, you, when you're calculating the rate, that's a very important part. Let's say you, I don't know, you earn 50,000 euros per year as a software programmer for a company. And if you want to work as a freelancer, in order to be left with the same amount of money, you should calculate your revenue with 1.5. So this means you should earn at least 75,000 euros per year as a freelancer to be on the same page as a normal employee earning 50K. Because you're going to need to pay more uh, health insurance, um, you don't have any sick days, you don't have any vacation days and anything else. So you should calculate with like 200 billable days per year there. So that's the first thing. If you know how to work smartly with your taxes, you can, for example, invest a portion of your revenue and reduce your taxes by that. You could get this a lot down. Uh, another thing you can do is also um, when you're working out the first year, you can specify how much you're projecting to earn. And you can, of course, go to the minimum there and pay taxes only on that. So if you're making every month like 10,000 euros and you said that you're going to make in the first year only like 1,000 euros per month, you're only going to pay taxes for the 1,000. Of course, you're going to need to repay those taxes in the second or third or fourth year. So that's something you need to take into consideration, but maybe you could invest that money somewhere else and pay those taxes later, for example. And you should be really careful about that 
because you are going to need to, uh, to pay those taxes in the end. So if you're smart with this and know how to work and you don't expect yourself to be really sick a lot and uh, working more days and maybe overtime, um, then it can pay you really off and you can reduce this uh, 1.5 scale that I have mentioned in the beginning to let's say 1.35 or something like that. So that's something to definitely take into consideration. And if you're already working overtime and working more hours, then you're going to be better suited as a freelancer. So let's say you work like nine to 10 hours a day, you can build all those nine to 10 hours. You take only a 30 minute lunch break, you can build it as well. So, I mean, not the lunch break, but you can build more, uh, build more hours there. Um, so this means in the end that it's going to be more profitable for you. Um, so the standard rates in Europe would be between 50 to 100 euros per hour and the standard employee rate would be around 20 to 30 euros per hour. So as you can see, it can be um, pretty much the same or it can pay off very well. Also, the acquisition of clients is not that hard if you know what you're doing and you specialize in a good area. So if, you, if the only thing you know is Java development, it's of course going to be a bit harder to find good clients and projects. But if you specialize in a niche uh, that's really popular in your area, then it can be really profitable for you. Like, let's say uh, you live in Munich and you get projects for Volkswagen, for example, and they require, I don't know, infrastructure automation experts, and they could be paying like 150 to 200 euros per hour. So um, this was just an example, not real numbers here, but um, it can go as high as that or even higher. So it can be really profitable if you are in those niches, in those areas. So how should you start doing this? I wouldn't recommend starting to freelance. I would really recommend trying to find a job, even an internship, getting something really low paid if necessary. But you should really have some work experience before you go this route. Because first of all, it's going to be stressful. You're going to need to register a company, uh, find an accountant, do everything with taxes. And this is really stressful. And you also need to consider that you're paying all those things, but you're not earning anything. Most, uh, in most cases, your clients are going to pay you like three to four weeks after your work is done. So if you start in January, you're going to see your first salary maybe end of February or beginning of March. So that's also something you need to consider. If you don't have any clients, you don't make any money. So there is definitely a risk in this, um, which you need to take into consideration when doing those types of things. So you really need to have some money prepared. You need some knowledge prepared. You need some contacts. Um, you don't need to know everything, but you should be in those waters and you should know what's going to expect. You shouldn't just say, I am going to quit my job or I'm just going to go straight into this. So. The route would be the best if you could um, work as a program developer, a software developer, um, and for example, let's say one, two years for a, let's say product company that just has some software out or a normal company that has some software to maintain. Um, it would be preferable if you could just, uh, if you could get one, two years more in a software consultant role. Um, so you know how to work with clients, you know how contracts work, you, you get a feeling for that and you make some contacts. And when you're comfortable with that, when you're comfortable with your work you're doing, then you should start freelancing. Because it's going to be most, uh, more profitable if you know what you're doing and if you do good work. Um, and basically it boils down to you doing good work. If you do good work, get a larger client, of course there are some worse and some better clients but it's going to be more profitable for you and you're going to have long-term clients. But if you jump into it and have luck in an interview and get a really good client, but you're not really qualified for the role, you're just going to screw up and that client is most probably not going to hire you again. So, and the world for freelancers is a bit smaller than the world for normal employees. So you really want to maintain good relationships there. So that's a route I would recommend. Uh, getting a job, getting some experiences, getting to know how to work with people, networking, then re uh, slowly getting into the water of freelancing, seeing what projects you can do, specialize in a certain area and take a project. And also don't take projects that are less than six months uh, because this is going to be stressful for you. And also one more thing to consider here in Europe, most freelancers um, are required for 
good projects to work at least 30 hours for that one project so per week uh, so then it's going to be problematic to having more projects at the same time so another good route you could do there is having maintenance projects where you invest like 10 hours um, for one client where you're maintaining some type of software and for example the other client is requiring you to work 30 40 hours per week where you are developing some new feature or working on some new project or something like that. So I would definitely recommend getting your experience there, uh, getting to know the rates. And one more, one more really important thing is getting to know the local industry, what is needed in your local place, because it's not going to be really helpful for you if you know what's popular in uh, California, but you don't know what's popular in, I don't know, uh, Berlin, for example, if you're stationed in Berlin. So that would be my recommendations, though there are a lot more things that go deeper into this and a lot more details to discuss and a lot more experience that I can share with you. So if you're interested in that type of content or have some uh, questions, just leave them down below in the comments or send me an email, subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.